Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? I am so glad to hear that. And me, oh yes, double thumbs up. Still above the grass and still vertical, you know. <laughs> Now, I don't know about where you are, but right here in England, we are still in the August summer temperatures. Today, we are going to have a promised high of 29 degrees Celsius. That's 84 degrees Fahrenheit. I really am enjoying the summer. And where are we going to go today? Somewhere warm, you say? <laughs> No, as a matter of fact, we're going to go to somewhere cool. Let me tell you. I've been in correspondence with a fellow on the YouTube who goes by Carlos J. Now, best I can determine, he is somewhere in South America, a resident there. I don't know where, but it's uh, he's in that particular continent. And he wrote this time and said, Hello again, Father Dane. Can you fly your 737 to the Falklands? And I responded, ooh, now that would be interesting because I've long suspected that Carlos may be from Argentina, you see. And uh, so, mm, Argentina to the Falklands. And of course, the Argentinians, they refer to the Falklands as Las Malvinas. And I thought, well, why not? Ryanair 186 is a bit of a pirate ship anyway. I mean, we don't follow the rules. We do what we want to do. Sometimes we obey ATC and sometimes we, well, we just don't. <laughs> so I thought, yes, why not? That would be brilliant. So yes, Carlos, today, we are going to fly from Argentina to Las Malvinas, the Falklands. Now, in case you weren't aware of the significance of this particular request and the route that we're going to fly today, I should give you a little history. Back in 1982, some Argentinian scrap metal dealers, some say were, in, uh, were also infiltrated by some marineros from um, Argentina. But anyway, they arrived up on the South Island of the Falklands and <laughs> raised the Argentinian flag, claiming it for Argentina again. So that created a bit of a political storm. Now you have to understand, Maggie Thatcher was prime minister at that time. And so she took very decisive action. She called on the armed forces, Navy, Army and Air Force, and they went down there. And then that resulted in a 10 week war. And uh, yes, there was some ships lost, a lot of airplanes lost. I mean, mostly on the Argentinian side, but it was still a bad situation. And ultimately, Argentina surrendered. But that, of course, is now all <laughs> history, water under the bridge, as they say. But it was an interesting situation, nonetheless. And one of the reasons that was given for the invasion was the discovery of oil, of course. <laughs> you know, there's a Latin expression, and it's qui bono, who benefits? And as a w copper once told me when I was a young lad, he says, if you want to find out who done it, 
follow the money. So let's see. Islands in the bottom of the South Atlantic, pretty much remote, it's windswept, nothing of particular importance. Suddenly there is a battle to who's going to dominate the island. And what does the island have? A very large quantity of oil. Well, I suppose that was good enough reason for anybody, isn't it? So I suppose there's always money at the bottom of everything. Anyway, it was, that was back in 1982. 1982. Oh. Today, we're going to fly from Argentina to Port Stanley. Uh, and that's the, on the most eastern island of the Falklands or Las Malvinas. We'll do it both ways. And um, for a starting point, I, of course, I could have gone from the more mainland part of Argentina, but the distance is really quite long. And I don't like to do long flights because they're terribly boring, actually. So I looked at Rio Gallegos, but I couldn't find any um, airport scenery there. Uh, so I looked for some other places and I discovered that um, the Tierra del Fuego has an airport there and it's Ushuaia. Ushuaia. And uh, the technical, the, the proper name is Malvinas Argentina S-A-W-H Airport. And that's at Ushuaia. And we're going to go then to Port Stanley, which is S-F-A-L. And that's in Las Malvinas or the Falklands. <laughs> now, the Malvinas Airport at the Tierra del Fuego is located four miles south of the city of Ushuaia. And it's on the island of Tierra del Fuego. Now, I don't know if you know the geography, but at the bottom of the South Americas, um, you've got Argentina on the one side and you've got Chile on the other side. And then Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan, and this was in 1520. He is a Portuguese explorer who was pretty much sponsored by the King of Spain to go to explore a southern route to get to the Spice Islands of the Pacific. So he sailed and he discovered a route that took him from the Atlantic to the Pacific and took him pretty much safely through the what is now called the Straits of Magellan. Although when he, uh, he partic when he discovered it and he named it in, called it uh, Estrecho de Todos los Santos, the Strait of All Saints. But it was the King of Spain, that's the Emperor Charles V at the time, and he was the one who sponsored this particular expedition and he decided to change the name to the Straits of Magellan in honor of Ferdinand Magellan's discovery. Now, Tierra del Fuego, how did in the world did it get its name? Because that means the land of fire. And let me tell you, down there, there's, it's not, <laughs> not full of volcanoes or anything like that. But apparently, it got its name from the campfires tended by one of its early settlers, the Yamana tribesmen. And all of these fires, campfires, were visible by the sailors on the ships passing by, so they called it the Tierra del Fuego. And that's how that got its name. Really interesting, fascinating history. Why am I so um, involved in this? Because geography was my discipline at university. <laughs> I, uh, I started out my flying as a cartographer, you know, flying aeroplanes and taking aerial photographs of the ground below. 
Yes, days before satellites, days before anything electronic. <laughs> you had to go in on foot and do all of the triangulations and all the measurements and everything in the old fashioned way. Pretty much like Ferdinand um, Magellan did and of course Christopher Columbus as he did it or Cristobal Colombo and uh, Americo Vespucci. Now there's my one of my heroes, Americo Vespucci. He was the one who mapped the routes and the inlets for the Americas during the early discovery there. How about that? <laughs> so that's what I started out with. That's how I became a pilot because of my uh, job as a map maker, as a cartographer. Right, let's see now. Okay, I've got some great scenery, Ushuaia is uh, SAWH airport scenery is made by Flight Sim Design of Chile and they're based in Chile and Port Stanley SFAL airport scenery is freeware and I'm indebted to David Midget who was the one who designed it so thank you David for the excellent scenery you did for Port Stanley Obviously, there are no direct flights between the two points, so we are going to make our own route. So, Carlos, <laughs> are you ready to reinvade Las Malinas again? <laughs> In that case, then, let's go ahead into pre flight and make ourselves a flight plan, shall we? Well, here we are in windy.com and I've got SAWH up here on the screen, which is right here at Ushuaia. And going, pulling back a little bit so that you can see the geography of the area. You can see here, this is the southern tip of South America. And here you've got the Straits of Magellan. And this is the route that Ferdinand Magellan discovered back in 1520 and this is actually an island down here this and this is what is called the Tierra del Fuego and from all of those uh, fires that were on the coastline by the local people there so looking at this you can see we've got uh, the wind doesn't look too fierce or too strong it's got here, wind is basically coming from 300 degrees, nine knots, varying to 60 to 320. Visibility 10 kilometers or more, clouds few at 2500. Now notice this, temperature is two degrees. And here in England, of course, we're getting up to 29, maybe get to 30 degrees, because we are in the end of summer. But down there, it is still winter time. Winter. Q and H is nine eight nine, which is of course in the lower pressure area. So there's a low pressure over the area, which is going to make the weather rather interesting. I would su uh, suggest. Over here. Oh, and this line here coming down. This part is Chile and this part is Argentina. So there is a division of that island between the two countries. So Ushuaia is in Argentina. Going over to runways, there is just the one runway. So if the wind is going in that direction, then we may be, well be taking off in this direction, but I have no idea. We'll have to see what uh, Simbrief uh, gives us on that. Looking at Port Stanley, a different story here. Here you can see the, the islands that make up Las Malvinas or the, uh, uh, the Falklands. Here is Stanley all the way over to the eastern part and this is the eastern island and 
I think it was this South Island, this part down here that uh, that started the Falklands War back in 1982. But we're going to be flying over the whole thing and attempting a landing at Port Stanley. Now this, of course, is an obsolete report because they are at a different time zone and certainly things are different down there, but it's calling the wind at 0317 knots. 17 knots, that's a stiff wind. Visibility 10 kilometers, VFR. Clouds few at 600 feet, so it definitely could close in and make the airport IFR. Broken at 10,000 feet, temperature 4 degrees, is actually warmer there. Dew point 3 degrees, Q and H 9 and 9 are 7, again in the low pressure area. Looking at the runways, well, if I were to guess, obviously I'd think that we would be coming in to land right on this one here. Runway 27. And there it is. That's the airport. And it was, of course, a uh, few battles around the area for control, but we're going to be peaceful as we go in today. All right, let's go in and make a flight plan. So we are Ryanair and we are 186. And we're departing SAWH and we're going to go to SFAL. And there is given us an alternate. Don't know where that alternate is, but we'll look it up in a moment. But we are Ryanair 186, profile six, re registration there. It's calling for a flight time of one hour 40, departing on runway 25, arrival runway 9. We are going to be full and we'll have what? Of course! Champagne and caviar! Why not? <laughs> Down here is the route that they've given us. It's a route distance of 462 nautical miles. And there it is. There's, there's the route swinging out, going across and going down here. And, ah, Mount Pleasant. That's the uh, alternate. So if Mount Mount Pleasant is the alternate altitude is 233 feet and there's the basic information for the weather so that will be our alternate should things go pear-shaped we just simply go back out and land right there so actually not bad of a distance to have to go okay Let's go on up to the top then and we'll save this and let's generate the flight plan. Well, here's the information. There's the start and there's the finish and there's the alternate. And we're given 35,000 feet for our cruising altitude. Airtime, one hour, 11 minutes. There's the block fuel, 5661. There is the route. So and it's planned optimum flight level. Looking down here, there's our designator. Right here, F350, that's the flight altitude, cruising altitude, and there is the flight route itself. Notice there is no uh, instrument approach for this. So we'll have to look and see what the charts give us for an arrival there. Cost index is six. Average wind is right here. We'll need to know that. Our block fuel at Oswire is going to be 5661. Reserves, 
They are there and there's the trip and taxi no tankering recommended. This is the entire flight route and I'll post this in the description box below the video. We're going to need to know the wind direction and speed at 20,000 feet and at 15,000 feet and at 10,000 feet for our descent information. But I want you to notice here, look at this. Temperatures at 350, which is our cruising altitude, is minus 56. So everything is in the cold, cold, cold. And looking here, there's minus 59, minus 56. So it's going to be chilly up there. And if we run into any cloud area, then we will definitely need to have anti-ice on because clouds are nothing more than visible precipitation and it will gather very quickly on engine cowlings and wing leading wings. Now here's a very interesting chart that you don't get to see very often. And this, of course, right here is the Tierra del Fuego is right there. And look at all of this interesting weather. I mean, there is lots and lots of activity there. And right here, that's the South Pole. So we are going to definitely be experiencing, well, perhaps not the smoothest flight. I wonder if we'll have to have the plastic glasses brought out for the champagne. Ooh, that would be tacky, wouldn't it? Here's the winds for flight level 340. And here you can see the chart. I've got it a little bit larger here. So you can see that we're going to be basically having some tailwinds going from Ushuaia to um, Stanley on this particular route. And looking at our profile, here you can see we start out at Ushuaia, climb up, top of climb here, and then long descend down into Stanley. And it's showing all the way at all of these altitudes, winds are going to be tailwinds. Few mountains, of course, around here at the Tierra del Fuego. This is the tropopause, and we will be flying above it. Technically, that's supposed to mean that the air will be a little bit calmer. But the interesting thing is, if you see here with the temperatures, minus 42, well, starting out here, 7, 17, 26, 33, 42, 52, and then 56, 55, 56. You get a little bit of temperature difference up here. So it's going to make that rather interesting. OK, let's go into Navigraph charts and build our plates. OK, here we are in Navigraph charts. Here you can see the island back down here of the Tierra del Fuego. And here you can see the borderline between Chile and here, Argentina. This, this is Argentina up here. I had thought about going from Rio Gallegos, but I couldn't find scenery for that. But I did find scenery for Ushuaia. And over here, right at this tip, that is where Port uh, Stanley is. Right, let's click here and new flight from SimBrief and bring it in. We'll put the charts for the beginning and we will be utilizing this. Now where we'll be parking, not sure yet, but we'll be at one of these particular stands right here for our departure. Now going over here to charts for our destination. 
Here's the airport. Let's look at that. Well, we're not going to be using this one. It's a little bit too short. So, and there is nine. It's suggesting that we're going to be coming in on that one. And there's runway nine. I'll pin that and let's look at the overlay. Well, we may be able to get away with doing a straight in. Not sure, but if we can, if we can come in and intercept this, then we may be able to go straight down and make a straight in landing. We'll have to see what happens. Okay. Then we've got everything cleaned up. We've got the information. We've got the charts that we need. We even have flotation devices just in case we decide that we need to go down and take a very chilly swim. Ha! <laughs> Not likely. Okay. Time to get into the airport. Are you ready, Carlos? Entonces, vamos a volar. Hello there, Carlos. Do come on board and take your seat and buckle your seat belts, please. And let me tell you where we are. Now, we are facing north and we are at um, Oswaya Airport in the Tierra del Fuego Island at the bottom of South America. Now, if you look at the map right here, you can see that the airport is actually on a little bit of a peninsula. And so we have water to the right and to the left and it's connected to the mainland only by a road going across to the north from where we are here. Chile, the border with Chile is to the south and it is also to the west of us here. And the water that is surrounding us, this is part of the Beagle Channel. Part of the Beagle Channel, which is the southernmost part of the island itself. And we, are, we have all kinds of mountains around here. Beautiful scenery. Now, I'm at the airport here, which is... Um, S-A-W-H. This is Ushuaia. And this is made by, this airport scenery is made by Flight Sim Design of Chile. And they made this airport scenery. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Because it really is very detailed. Here we are, I'm looking out to the west. And you can see the terminal building here and some jetways. I'm at stand number four. There is no jetway for stand number four. The frame rate is 29, 30, 31, tw averaging 29 or 30. And there you can see some part of the Beagle Channel just ahead there and we are on the peninsula. Now I'm looking directly north at this point. Now swinging round to the east and you can see where the there is another parking space to the right which is cargo mainly. So I'm right on the border between the cargo and the passenger section. Our passengers will come out through here and then exit a door at the bottom and then mount the stairs as usual. Now I'm connected to ground power at the moment and since it was so cheap down here I threw caution to the wind and had them connect the ground power so that we don't use additional fuel because we are going over water and um, 
we want all the fuel that we can get. And I've been around, I've checked the tires, everything else, windows are all washed and clean. Local weather is VFR and it's showing the barometric pressure is 9 and 9 8 and runway that is in use is suggested it should be 25. There are some clouds overhead, just a few clouds drifting and the temperature outside is a warm 4 degrees, 4 degrees. So not bad for the time of year. Not bad at all. Okay, let's get the rest of the system set up then. So power is already on and as you can see I have 115 volts coming from ground power. So I'm going to turn on the galley. I'm going to go over here and make sure that the emergency exit lights are on and seatbelt signs, no smoking signs are on now. I'm turning on the IRS to get the GPS warmed up. Now I'm turning on the left and the right window heat. I'm leaving the probe off for the moment. Four degrees is not bad. And I'm going to turn on the hydraulic electric pumps right there. And now I'm going to turn on the... Well, not exactly air conditioning but heat that is now rushing into the cabin and the steady light is on. The forward service hatch is open and the equipment stairs are down. Okay, everything is looking good on the board and passengers are starting to board so we'll get the FMC program, shall we? So here we make sure that we've got the latest air rack and that the program is in date. Go to the position. Our starting position is SAWH. SAWH. And we are at gate four. So I'm going to put four in here. There it is. According to this, the coordinates should be 54, 50, and 4, and 68, 18, and 6. There it is. So, push that and enter that in. Now our GPS is located. Go to root. We are, of course, starting out from SAWH. S-A-W-H and we're going to go to S-F-A-L S-F-A-L over here and then we are Ryanair so that's R-Y-R and we're number 186 right there now we go to next page and here's where we put in our route now the first waypoint is Kexop so K-E-X-O-P and put that in. Then we go to Dabli D-A-B-L-I and it's the top one. Put that in and then to Atoki. So A-T-O-K-I And then we activate that and execute. Go to fix. We need to have our circles around our destination at SFAL. So SFAL. And we need a four mile circle. We need a 10 mile circle. And a 30 mile circle. Go to Descent, go to Forecast, Transition Level is set by ATC, 
but we do need the information for flight level 200, flight level 150, and flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. Q&H at our destination is 1011, 1011, which is almost getting to be standard at Stanley there. At the 200 level, it is 222 at 21, and at 150, it is 223 at 17. And at 10,000 feet, it is 216 at 17 knots. Some pretty stiff wind out there. Execute that. Now we go to departures. And here's where we need to get our clearance because there is no ATIS here. So we'll need to contact the tower and get our clearance, departure clearance. So we request IFR clearance. Ushia Tower, Ryanair 186, IFR 2, Stanley, ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Alpha Tango, Oscar Kila, India Airport, as file. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 7000. Departure frequency is 118.1, squat 5127. Ryanair 186 cleared to Alpha Tango Oscar Kilo India Airport as filed fly runway heading climb and maintain 7000 departure on 118.1 score 5127 Ryanair 186 red back correct contact ground on 118.1 Okay we will do that and get our taxi request in Ashia ground Ryanair 186 ready to taxi IFR Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 7 using taxiway Bravo runway 7 contact tower on 118.1 when ready Taxi to and hold short runway 7 using taxiway Bravo runway 7 Ryanair 186 Well that is a change because earlier we were given uh, that it was going to be runway 25 so now if we're going to depart from runway 7 then we'll be using the uh, Ochoa 2 Alpha departure and we're going to be transitioning at Kexop. So, put that in, execute that, go back to departures and arrivals. Now, it's showing that it's going to be 09 on the arrival. So I'm going to put 09 in there and the transition is MTP and but the problem is down here we're winter and the weather is changing and there's anything could happen so we may be on runway 9 when we arrive or runway 27 I do know this the conditions are reported at Stanley right now is that the wind is from 178 degrees at 3 knots. Now it's not a very strong wind, but 178 means it's coming from the south. So whether we come in on runway 09 or runway 27, it's going to be a crosswind landing. And at 3 knots, that's not too bad yet, but if it gets any stronger, then we really are going to have a very interesting landing crosswind with gusts and on a very short runway okay still want to come with me Carlos are you cool for this ha, okay well we'll go from Argentina to Las Malvinas or the Falklands in short order here all right so if that's what we're going to do then I'm going to need to set the heading to 074 because that will be our departure heading. So 074. Wasn't expecting this one, but it's it is changeable. And our cruising altitude is 37,000 feet. 
I'm going to put 37,000 feet up in here. This is for pressurization. And our airport elevation is 74 feet. That's closer to 50. These go in increments of 50 feet. So I'm going to put the landing altitude as 50. Okay, now I'm going to go into route, perform the initialization. We have 5,493 kilograms of fuel on board. Reserves are going to be 1,673, which comes to 1.7. Trip and taxi is 3,178. Adding those two together comes to 4,851, which is closest to 4.9. So 4.9 for the plan, 1.7 for the reserves, cost index is 6, we're at 3.70 for our cruise, the cruise wind is 239 at 75. And the transition altitude is 5,000 feet. And double click this, and then it makes all the calculations for me. And execute that. Go to N1 limit. Here you can see the outside temperature is 4 degrees. I'm going to do 4 degrees. I'm not going to bother with all the D rates and the bumps or anything like that. Take off, we will be flaps 10. And I'll double click this and it gives us the center of gravity and it gives us the trim. One click on each of these, that's V1. There's the rotation speed and there is V2 or liftoff. So 145 goes in here. All right. Your damper is on, the light has gone out. I'm going to put the flight director on here and there. Push this, push that, and we have green lights on the VNAV and the LNAV button, so we have a good flight plan. Going to arm the throttle there. VOR1, VOR2, VOR1, VOR2. Now I'm going to go to legs and I'm going to go through the plan. All right, this is the plan and there's the airport. You can see that we are facing north at the moment. So I'm just going to go and do the steps. There's the departure, swinging around right over the top of the NDB. And there's Kexop, there's Dabli, and there's a Toki. Now I'm going to bring this up to join it up so that the next point is the MTP and then it comes in right here for a straight in landing for runway 09 provided that nothing goes amiss and there it is straight down to the runway. Now I'm going to go switch back to map I'm going to put the weather on mine, double click to bring up the data and I'm going to go to 20 miles on my range here. I'm going to put the terrain on yours, very important because look at that, you can see there's plenty of mountainous activity right around us. Double click for data. Now I'm going to turn on the TCAS, I'm going to switch to anti-skid and we are about ready to make our pushback and engine start. Since we're going to be departing on runway 07, then our nose needs to go to the left and our tail needs to go to the right. And which engine would you like to start today? Number one or number two? Oh, you want to start number two? We can start number two, no problem. Okay, let's do the 
Everybody's on board, so I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the door. There, that's the electric motor bringing up the air stairs. So, fuel is checked, windows locked, check, seatbelt signs are on, check, door lights are all out, check, MCP programmed and checked, takeoff thrust bugs are done, takeoff speeds are done, CDU pre flight we've completed, rudder aileron trim it is set. Taxi takeoff briefing, we've just done that. Anti collision light is now going on. So, we are ready now to start the APU and then we'll have to ask them to disconnect the ground power and then give us a pushback, okay? So, I'm going to turn this now to APU generator, turn on the fuel pumps, and I'm going to start the APU. The APU, as you know, is a generator, and we also have generators on each of the main engines. So we've got lots of redundancy should things go horribly pear-shaped. All right, it's starting to build up. The needle is climbing there. In a moment, that low, the oil pressure light has gone out. And now this will start to descend. And when it stabilizes, this light will come on to tell us that there is 115 volts available from the APU generator. In which case, I will then be able to switch from ground to the APU. There it is. We are now on the ground power. So now I'm going to... We've got 115 volts, going to switch the power off and we're going to have our nose turn to the left. So, are you ready? Okay, in that case then we'll ask the people to give us a pushback. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Ready to push. Tail to the right. Parking brake release, please. Parking brake is released. And now I'm switching to engine Brakes number released. two. For the... To check for the generator bolts coming off of it. This is the start switch for engine two. So we'll turn this as Brakes soon release. as... Here we go. There we go. We're now starting. Okay, over here the start valve has opened and heating is turned off. The N2 is spinning up. When that gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Now we're coming up to 21 and 24. Now, the next thing I'm looking for is the engine gas temperature to increase, and there it is. Look at that. Wow, look at the temperature coming out of the back end of that engine. You know, I suppose if we wanted to toast some bread, that would be a great place to do it. What do you think? You think that Mr. O'Leary at Ryanair would do that? <laughs> Perhaps not. Well, there's the engines. Engines have kicked in. Now I'm looking for 115 volts, good. Switching now to engine number one. Wow, look at the detail out there. Well, the star valve has opened, the engines are spinning up. Doing very Push nice. Complete. Parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Brake set. And I brought in the fuel. Looking now for the engine gas temperature to rise, and it is. Looking for Steering lower oil pulled. pressure Watch to go out. On your right. After flight. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice people on the ground, aren't they? Don't you think so? And the N2 is doing well. The 
gas temperatures are rising very nicely. Engines have ignited. Now I'm looking for 115 volts, which I have. Now, as soon as this little tick mark has gone off, that says then the generators are matched and balanced. And good. Now I can switch to the main engines for our power. Turn on the packs again to get the heat going. Turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. Right, I've got the Navigraph charts active, which you can see down here. Let me just stretch it out so it fills the screen. So you can see we need to go out here, turn left, go to the active runway, go to the right, do a turnaround, and then take off in that direction. But before we do that, I'd like to show you the rest of the detail here. I'm looking now south. Those hills that you see there are part of Chile. And that's the Beagle Sound that you can see out there. Swinging around. Look at the detail of this. Beautiful, good markings. I like the markings of this. Flight Sim Design. Uh, in Chile, they did a lovely job putting this together. And there you can see one aircraft parked at the stands and some pretty big mountains in the background. Incidentally, uh, part of that is Chile and then the ones on the right with the cloud, that is Argentina. And we're going to have to clear those mountains for our departure. Beautiful scenery, beautiful scenery. Okay, now I'm gonna go to flaps 10. it is in transit. So generators are on. Probe heat is now going on. Anti-ice not required at the minute but we'll have to watch for that if we go through clouds because that will form ice quickly. Isolation valve is not needed. Engine stop levers idle detent. And flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is checked. Flaps, we have green light. Stabilizer trim is checked. Auto brake is RTO. Speed brake lever down detent. Ground equipment is clear. So, I'm now going to turn on the lights for taxi. And crew, we are about to move to the active runway. We're about to take off, all being well. All right, I'm going to release the brake, and we're going to go out there and go to the active. All right, now we're moving. Beautiful scenery. You know, this is a lovely day. This could be really nice wonderful flying weather if it wasn't so cold and the possibility of ice forming up there. Showing crosswind. 
if that windsock is anything to go by, we are going to have a crosswind takeoff here. No wonder it was so iffy whether it was going to be 25 or 7. Oh well, they've given us 7, so 7 we will use. Is everything okay, Cap Captain Carlos? Okay, now I need to get takeoff clearance. I'll show you a tower, Ryanair 186 at runway 7, ready for takeoff by FR2 Alpha Tango Oscar Kilo India. Ryanair 186, clear for takeoff runway 7. Cleared for takeoff runway 7, Ryanair 186. Well, we are cleared for takeoff, so I am. <coughs> Takeoff briefing, engine bleeds are on, engine start switch is continuous, cabin is secure, and now I'm putting on the strobe and I am starting the clock. Okay, let's go out here now to the end of the runway. Well, we're under a bit of a cloud at the minute, sun's gone.
get the engine anti-ice on and make sure that there are, we don't pick up any ice going through this.
come at a good time because now we have to make some changes. I've just been informed that we are going to go and land on runway 27 and not runway 09. So I'm going to have to make a change on that. So now we are, let me do the legs, MTP, and bring it up.
which is directly south, four miles south of that D5.5 or the FF27 waypoint. And then we're going to turn left to, that will be our base leg to go into the FF27, at which point when we get to FF27, we will be at 1800 feet. When we hit that, then it is a descent all the way down to land on runway 27. And remember, the length of the runway is just over 3,000 feet. Not very long at all. Somewhere through the cloud is Stanley Airport, and we can't see it because of the clouds, so we have all sorts of weather conditions here. One thing we do not want to do is land in the sea because this is winter, we're close to the South Pole, and the temperatures, well, I'm not into cold baths anymore. I gave that up a long time ago. Coming up on our descent altitude. And we'll be turning on. We're 2500. 2500.
engine start switch is continuous, altimeters are set, nav aids are correct, and lights are all on. Clear to land, runway 27. Clear to land, runway 27, line at 186. And crew secure for landing. I'm resetting the MCP altitude altimeter to 3,000 feet in case of missed approach. All right, we're going down the the slope. We seem to be slightly off course here, so. This is the eastern view, and I'm 
swinging around. This airport scenery is freeware by the way and it was designed by David Midget. So this is freeware scenery and over there there are vehicles parked. You can see how low the clouds are and there's the tower and they actually have people in it. Wow, impressive. And then swinging over to the west. That is, look at the weather. It's really low cloud here. All right, let's go in and park and let our passengers disembark. And uh, no markings here, so we'll just put our nose right up there in front of the tower. How's that? There's a fuel lorry there, so we'll uh, be quite close to refilling. Okay, the parking brake is on, lights off, and shut down. All right, let's clean up, galley off. All right, the stairs and the doors are going out, the doors are opening. All lights are off. Okay, everything is looking good. Our passengers are disembarking. So, fuel off, APU off, and battery off, and shutdown is complete. Well, Carlos, we made it. Bienvenido a las Marinas, or welcome to the Falklands. And here we are at Port Stanley Airport, and the weather, well, it is winter, of course, there is snow blowing about and the ice crystals are certainly are hanging in the air. You will need a warm coat to go out in this, I think. So thank you for the suggestion and thank you for coming along to fly to the Falklands from Argentina. That was a very brave move, uh, move of yours. Uh, and. Uh, I suspect there was a bit of mischief in there somewhere, <laughs> but I'm delighted to do it. And we didn't make too bad of a landing, consider crosswinds and gusting going on, and the last minute runway change on us. Well, well, well. But those things do happen. Right, I'm going to go off and make myself a hot cup of tea. How about you? Okay. All right, I'll see you everybody next week on another flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.